The Honourable Heather Roy. Thank you, Mr Speaker. The ACT Party will be supporting the second reading of this bill, and uh, as the debate has been going on this evening, I recall uh, being on the Health Select Committee at the time uh, that we grappled with um, many very thorny issues around this, um, what at the time was still quite a contentious issue. Uh, things have moved on. Um, Dr Paul Hutchison uh, mentioned Louise Brown, the first baby born by in vitro fertilisation in 1969, and things have moved significantly from then. And he quoted, we're very fortunate at the time of the 2004 bill to have Dr Paul Hutchison on the committee to provide us with some quite technical uh, expertise and still fortunate to have him uh, here with us now so that he's still able to provide that very good advice to us. But he said tonight that 1,100 babies a year are born uh, with IVF. Uh, which is staggering, really, and made such a huge difference uh, to so many families' lives. Uh, the bill, as several other members have mentioned, really is just a very tiny amendment bill, and it's gratifying, I have to say, six years down the track, for those of us who did sit on that select committee to hear the original bill, that, in fact, we largely got it right. Um, as I say, there were many thorny issues that we had to grapple with at the time, some very contentious, and some of the, the submitters that we heard from both sides came and spoke with a great deal of passion and emotion, uh, and, uh, but, but took very different sides of, of the arguments. Uh, but to, to think that we're only making this very small amendment here in the House um, is, is gratifying to, to know that we, we did largely get it right. I think the intention of the committee at the time certainly was for uh, the 10-year period that gametes and embryos, embryos could be stored was from the time of storage. Uh, and so the 2004 argument, uh, which has become uh, the legal uh, aspect of this debate, uh, wasn't what was originally intended. And so it is, it is good that we've got the opportunity to, uh, to clarify that tonight and to do something about that. Others have also mentioned the six months period of grace in the bill. Um, I didn't have the, the, um, the ability to, to hear the submitters, but I understand that that was a popular concept, and I think it does make a good deal of sense, and uh, certainly we at the ACT Party are happy to support that tonight. The other part of the bill that is important, I think, and um, the Green member mentioned this uh, just uh, prior to me, uh, getting to my feet, the clarification of the roles of the ethics committees and the advisory committees uh, is very important. Uh, unlike Mr Haig, I do support guidelines as opposed to regulation, but I don't think that that will come as any surprise to him. I think that the uh, ethics and the advisory committees are chosen very carefully. They're people who are there because uh, they have a breadth of experience, they have a lot of technical expertise, and I think that they do need the freedom that guidelines can provide uh, to be able to, to have flexibility and make the decisions wisely that they need to be able to do. But uh, it is welcome, too, that this amendment bill is providing clarification of the rules of those committees. Um, some of those problems that arise still are thorny, and uh, their expertise is greatly valued. They take their jobs very seriously, and it's important uh, that they, they do have those guidelines within which to operate. Uh, so the ACT Party is very proud to support this bill tonight. Uh, we welcome it, and um, I think that it is worth thanking those members of the Health Select Committee in 2004 uh, who, who did a very good job at the time. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Speaker. I call 